So one of the most exciting times for Diablo 2 Resurrected is right around the corner, and that's a ladder reset. Now I get asked questions all the time on stream, and I feel like if you choose the wrong answer to some of these questions, you can really limit the amount of fun you can get out of a ladder reset. So I decided to combine these all into one video right here, the most crucial tips to starting a ladder reset. So I want to preemptively hit some comments that I know are going to come. Generally, these tips are for softcore, not hardcore. Things change a little bit differently, but 98% of people probably play softcore Diablo 2. And also, if you're the kind of person that has Enigma Infinity in the first two weeks of ladder, these tips probably aren't going to help you out a bunch. But hey, don't go away. Check these tips out and head down in the description. Give some of your own best tips for some of the new and returning players. Now, ladder just reset. I'm going to run out here and get after this game right now. Now, can you actually see the mistake that I'm making currently? Well, it's actually right here or what you don't see right here. In my opinion, you do not want to go out and start ladder reset alone. It really does limit the amount of fun when you're out there playing by yourself. This game's intended to be a online multiplayer game. Now, on top of that, there's a ton of benefits to actually playing online with people as opposed to singular by yourself. You get more experience when you have full parties more items drop each other can help kill different monsters let's say something's immune to physical something that's a caster could take it out for you and vice versa if something is immune to cold and you can go ahead and take it out with your barbarian if you're the character right up over here on top of that you can actually help each other get good gear if you find a barbarian helm and then you can give it to the barb or you know vice versa you give it to the sorceress if you find a sorceress orb so really in my opinion you're making a crucial crucial mistake if you're doing ladder reset and you're playing solo it's just not the way it's intended to be all right now we'll take a look at another absolutely crucial in my opinion thing that people do wrong and that is right here oh no they're immune to lightning i can't kill them what am i gonna do maybe i guess i'll have to dual spec or something like that so take half of the damage away from one attack type and put it into fire because i can't kill the stuff immune to lightning do not do not do that in my opinion, really what it does, if you dual spec a character like that, it limits the potential kill speed that you have. What you need to do is actually pinpoint specific areas that are going to be great for your character. We'll say for the one I have pulled up right here, a Lightning Nova Sorceress, I'm going to be doing all Lightning damage. Obviously, that's what Nova is. So what I'm going to be doing is targeting things like the Countess, the Summoner, Ghost Packs in the Arcane Sanctuary, all the way down to the Countess, you can take out things once again like Ghost Packs, the Fallen Packs, or the uh, Goat Men on the way down there, I don't remember what they're called. You can slap away Cows, Eldritch and Shank, Pindle, a bunch of different things you can do with the Nova Sorceress. So take that into account if you're going into things like Cold, only go farm Ancient Tunnels, Stony Tombs, Mephisto, Andaro. There's a bunch of different places that anything can go. Also, if you are out there doing the Terra Zones, which obviously at some point you're going to be, don't worry about killing every monster anyways, because if you follow the first tip, you should have other people in the game to kill the ones that are immune to you, and you can kill the ones that are immune to them. You actually will increase the kill speed a ton of even the entire group if you just go down your lane and max out the damage and take out the monsters that you can. And while you're playing through the game with these builds, you don't have to kill every single monster. Just run right past them. Use your telly staff if you're a sorceress. Telly right on by. You don't have to kill every monster in the game. You only have to kill the ones that you have to kill to advance in the quest. And then from there on, you just pick and choose where's going to be the most efficient, the best place to farm, and to get yourself better gear. So with the exception of incredibly rare instances, I would recommend don't dual spec, especially something like a sorceress like this. Just go down a lane and farm specific areas. And then when you're on a playthrough and you only got one type of build, just don't kill every monster. You just don't have to. Here we are, I got my sorceress, and we're trying to take out Andaro here, and you see we are in Nightmare. Unfortunately, didn't really get anything great, which, you know, is kind of be expected. So this is actually the next mistake, the next crucial tip that I should give you. Don't farm too much gear early on in normal and in Nightmare. In general, especially if you're playing through with multiple people, multiple other players, multiple types of damage, you shouldn't really have to. Now, by spending time farming in normal and nightmare things like that, you're really limiting the potential of getting lucky in hell difficulty and getting something absolutely godly. Now, doing things like Andaro and Motric and Mephisto or any of the super easy areas, the pits, the ancient tunnels, anything along those lines, while doing that, you could get super lucky 
and who knows pop a burr rune pop a jaw rune or something like that perhaps you get super lucky and actually drop that shako super early or an oculus or an area's face or depending on what character a ton of different good stuff but specifically in normal and nightmare you definitely absolutely could not get lucky and get one of those incredibly high runes there's a ton of other things too, elite bases. Really, it goes on and on and on, the good stuff you could get in hell. So unless you absolutely cannot go on any further and uh, you just have to, have to, have to, I would really, it's crucial in my opinion, just play through the game as fast as you can, teleporting or telestaffing it to try to get through to hell and then wait to farm there so you don't waste your time farming in normal and nightmare. So the next crucial, crucial mistake that I get asked questions about and then I kind of give my opinion on what you should have been doing, people will ask, well, if you're going into, we'll say Nova, for example, but this applies to all different types of builds and characters, where do you put your points down the lightning tree as you're playing through in order to make sure you're not wasting points to go into that build? Well, what I end up telling people, you don't really want to go straight into Nova usually. If you want to be dealing out a bunch of damage yourself through normal, through a lot of nightmare, go with a different build. A lot of times on Sorceress, they go with the fire skill tree and they come down with like Fireball and play that halfway through Nightmare. And then they use one of their respects from Akara, the Den of Evil quest. And then at that point, when you're level 40, 45, 50, anywhere in there, something like that, then you respec into the build you want to actually be playing in the end game, whether it's Nova, whether it's Blizzard or whatever, perhaps it'd be something over here. Maybe you're doing Hydra or something like that. So you don't necessarily want to go directly into the type of build that you want to play for the entire game. Go into one that you know for sure is going to absolutely slap down normal and nightmare and then respec later. Make sure you do have a good plan for those respecs though, because you only get three of them. And if you so make sure after those three respecs, you are fully 100% set on a build that you want to do and that can do pretty darn good because you have to at least minimum be able to trade or an absolution token to respec if there are any mistakes made or you want to go into a different build or you have to actually be able to farm those tokens, which in my opinion is a way harder than actually just trading for them. So make sure you have a plan going in with what you're gonna use those respects for and exactly where the points are gonna go for your build. Now, next up is a very, very crucial one once again, and it really is a big part of playing online Diablo 2 and part of ladder. And that is you really need to be trading. Now, a lot of people can struggle to find people to trade with, uh, you can do it the old fashioned way but by creating games you get out there and kind of like magic find while waiting for someone to join and trade with you but that can be one of the slowest and least consistent ways it is kind of the traditional way and a lot of people like doing things the old school traditional way but way better ways is to use different types of websites or maybe even discords you could trade in my discord link in the description there's other discords you can trade in as well it doesn't really matter to me where you get it done at but it really does help you out a ton to be trading there are also websites a lot of people hate it but d2jsp a lot of people use and it works pretty darn good a tradery super popular but known to work really darn good and there are many 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 more so you can look into some other ones like that or you can use some of the ones i mentioned right there but trading is absolutely key and it kind of comes back to a lot of the other crucial points that I brought up here. If you're gonna be out there farming in specific areas, which really is the most efficient way to get things done and to get things found, you're, you're not gonna find everything that you need, but you're gonna find a lot of stuff that other people need, and you can trade that for then the things that you do need. It's gonna take you forever and ever and ever to find things like a Death Fathom, to find a D-Web, to find a Griffin's Eye, but it's gonna take you a lot less time to find the items and the value that you then can trade for those incredibly rare items because somebody you know it's going to happen a barbarian is going to find that griffin's eye and they don't need it but that barbarian needs a jaw and a burr to make enigma but they're not going to be able to find those perhaps so then you can go ahead and make that swap and make that trade or whatever the value for particular items and particular runes are at that time but it will really benefit you i really 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 beg you implore you get out there and do some trading in order to get that gear that you need